Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Welcome back to West Lindsay, everybody. Now, last week we saw North Kelsey and today we're going to see its southern counterpart. But we're beginning here at the Skipworth Arms, which is opposite an old railway station, which is right there. And I like something about this station. Look at this, outside the station house, we've got this very nice planter in the shape of a uh, train. <laughs> You'll find this in Moortown, and it's part of the parish of South Kelsey. West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Today we're in South Kelsey, the smaller of the two Kelsey twins. This one is situated on the B1205, five miles east of the A15 and four and a half miles southwest of Caister. A somewhat linear affair, very unlike its larger northern neighbour, South Kelsey Parish consists of a string of houses running north from the B1205 and small clumps of properties to the south. The parish also includes Moortown, a smaller secondary settlement where there's an old station on the same line as North Kelsey's old station was, which we learned about last week. South Kelsey is almost West Lindsay's answer to Newark and Sherwood's Winthorpe when it comes to names. There are four important ones associated with the area. All four are important, but one stands out more than the others, Askew, and it's this name which crops up time and again in South Kelsey. The most famous Askew family member was Anne, an English writer, poet and Anabaptist preacher who was condemned as a heretic in England during the reign of Henry VIII. The village has a pub, a church, a nursery, a playground and a village hall, all of which seem to be used on the regular by its residents. It's another close-knit West Lindsay community. Time then for another wander to see what else the smaller Kelsey twin can tell us. We begin in Moortown at the Skipworth Arms. It's a pub that carries a family name. Moortown House was the residence of the Skipworth family about a century ago, before it passed to the Boynton family. The old station is now occupied privately. We were spotted filming this by its occupants. Whilst they had no problem with that, they did ask us to mention here that the old station frontage is not a tourist attraction and people should not come to see it. The rest of Moortown is basically a small crossroads where the road from the A46 at Caister meets the B1205, which crosses the B1434 as it runs between North Kelsey and Holt and Limor. Okay, so now we're in South Kelsey itself. Now this is the only one today that's kind of like a linear village, though I have kind of turned it into a circular route-ish. It's not brilliant, but... Uh, <laughs> it's the best I can do. Okay, here's South Kelsey Village Hall to start with. 
which is right opposite the old post office. Like Moortown, South Kelsey is centred on a crossroads too, and on that crossroads there's a pub. This is the Bull Inn. It's closed on a Monday, but the rest of the week this has a fine restaurant which specialises in steak and fish. There are three old chapels in South Kelsey. Here we have the first of them, located on the B1205. This is the United Free Methodist Church, founded sometime before 1865. It closed in 1967. Also on the crossroads is an old school. This was erected by Lady Mary Askew in 1712 and rebuilt in 1812. It was later restored in 1879 and converted to a national school. On this sign at the main crossroads, Hall Farm Park is mentioned. That's a small family run park which is great for a day out with the kids. I've linked their website below and they also feature in today's picture bit. So hiding behind these trees and this wall here is the church. We'll catch that on the way back. For now though, we have Cheeky Monkey's Day Nursery and Preschool, spotted by Nikki. Well done, thank you, missus. Other than the B1205, Brig Road is effectively South Kelsey's main street. Along it, we found a few stalls for the TVI pounds. This one was unusual. It sells bird peanuts. We opted for a bag of them. In front of you here is an old forge. There's a sign on the wall which says bespoke furniture. After a bit of digging, I learned that this is, or perhaps was, as it wasn't open, the base of M.A. Cowie Furniture. Next is the second old chapel of the three here. This one is the Trinity Methodist Chapel, a Wesleyan effort, founded in 1822. The third of the three was a primitive chapel, located close to our next landmark. That would be a cemetery which occupies a piece of land off a corner where Brig Road bends left and then right again as it heads north. This was somewhat of an unexpected stop, as I will now explain. So this cemetery was something of a surprise because it's uh, not marked on the map that I'm using. So this was uh, a bit of an added extra, I guess. It's quite a big one too, so says Nicky. Yeah, well obviously the, the church is uh, the other end of the village, we haven't caught that yet. Any graves of note? There's no, there's no like war graves or anything like that. Um, you no. With, you know, tiny babies, that kind of thing, but uh, it looks like it's just like a local people, non-denominational type of cemetery. Yeah, uh, fair enough. After a walk around the cemetery, Nikki opted to try out this bench on the bend while I continued north towards a bridge over a stretch of water, one which we've mentioned before. Any allotment fans watching? Yeah? Good. Well, you know you are. On the corner is a fairly sizeable patch dedicated to South Kelsey's allotments. Thumbs up all round for these today. This then is the watercourse in question. This, folks, is the Caister Canal, which of course never reached Caister. More town was as far as it got, and these days it's nothing much more than a stream. After turning around and reconvening with Nicky, this footpath is what makes this route sort of circular. We can use this to get back to the old forge where we were earlier, as it runs parallel to Brig Road. So this is somewhat of a refreshing change. This footpath is quite clearly marked, clearly uh, maintained. well maintained, which is a good thing. I've been on some horrible ones just lately, as I'm sure you've uh, seen in my recent uh, episodes elsewhere in the country. This is, in an ideal world, how they should be, but obviously it's not always possible, I get that but uh, it's refreshing to walk on one like this. Let's move on to the main religious building. Before we do, I should mention that a priory was founded here in 1083, which was dedicated to St. John the Baptist. It was a cell to the Abbey of Sees in Normandy. The Church of St. Mary is what we have these days. South Kelsey originally had two churches, the other being St. Nicholas's, which fell into disuse in or around the year 1800. Portions of St. Mary's Church date back as far as 1250. 
The church was almost entirely rebuilt in 1795, using many of the stones from the Church of St Nicholas. It was then renovated in 1854 and restored in 1889. On the wall inside we have a display which tells us about Anne Askew, a native of the village and one of only two women on record to have been tortured at the Tower of London and then burned at the stake. We've got an effigy and this is possibly Robert Hansard who distinguished himself in the Scottish Wars in the reign of Edward I, 1272-1307. We've got some memorial windows up above as well. Yes, we have. Anything else in here, Nikki, which was of interest? There's some nice murals on the back wall there. Yeah, we'll take a look at those in a minute. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's have a wander around. I, I, like, I like to explore churches like this. Sometimes it's easier than just trying to voice over everything. That's the pulpit. Uh, Lexington, I should say, not pulpit. Pulpit's the other side. Yes, pulpit's the other side. I do know my way around a church, I promise. <laughs> Yeah. Choir. There's a tablet up above the uh, lectern there too. In memory of somebody, yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's a roll more, of honor. More remembrance. There's a roll of honor on the wall here. Victorian funeral, dear. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, there, there is an old. So, ah. a, a funeral beer was what was used to, to, to transport the coffin. Yep. And there it is. Hidden away. I'm glad there's a sign there. I don't think we would have seen that otherwise. Let's go and have a look at these murals on the back wall. Some puffy wreaths on the way. There's not a lot of room down here. There's fonts down here as well. There it is. Yeah, Belfry at the back. I think all in all, this is uh, one very nice church, this. Well worth a visit, people. The only parish notice board we found along the route today was this one in the church's porch. So mark off South Kelsey people, both of the Kelsey twins are now in the books. Let's move on. Across the road from the church is Zidon Motorsport, a garage who specialise in Vauxhall engines. Although based in a small village, they serve customers throughout the UK. Modified classic, retro and modern cars are all catered for here. And this brings us back to the village hall which we saw earlier. This has something of a military feel to it. It reminded me somewhat of the village hall in Barlow in the Selby series. Opposite this, as we already know, is the old post office. In the early 1900s, the name G. Dannett would have been above the door. That was George Dannett, who was the postmaster, who was also a draper and a grocer. That's pretty much it for South Kelsey folks, except of course, for today's picture bit.
that happy, he'll be able to feed his birds. Well, you know, I've got warm all of a sudden. I have finally relented and took the hoodie off. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, a, bit it's a bit warm now, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, thankfully, the next place is not as big as this. So it should be, in theory, easier to walk around. Um, do you fancy a brandy, Mrs? No, I fancy a breeze. A breeze? Uh -huh. Ah, well the reason I say that is because the next place begins in a place called Brandy Wharf. I don't know whether there's any um, alcoholic liquids out there, but uh, I suppose we will we'll find, find, out. find out when we get there. This has been the parish of South Kelsey and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. I'm out. <laughs>